Hey, this demo is going to be on Revit Demo 1, so we're just kind of getting into the software. So, um, on your screen, my uh, desktop, by the way, is completely chaotic compared to what you see, but um, you should see a Revit 2022 icon, so that's the one you're going to open. And so, double click. I don't know if that's an existing building or it's just a crazy model, but that's the one that they have on the, uh, on the software. It looks to me like a funky building that could never be built. All right, so as it opens, give it a second here. Mine usually doesn't take this long to open, so there must be something going on. There we go. Okay, so um, this is going to be the uh, kind of the startup screen. Um, yours is not going to show exactly like mine. These are existing projects that I just worked on. So this is the one I did before, and then this is the one before that, and this is the one before that. You're going to see probably three of them here, and they're just ones that are out of the box. And then same thing with uh, with families. You're not going to see a whole lot here because you haven't really done much yet. Okay. So to get this started, we're going to go um, over here to Models, and we're going to hit um, New, New. Now, when you hit New, you're going to get this little box that comes up. It's really important that you use the right template. The one that's defaulting, the construction template, is not good for us. We want to use the um, Imperial Architecture template, and hit OK. And it's going to open up and take us to the screen. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is just kind of, I'm on page six in the book. If you want to follow me on the Revit 2022 book, I'm on page six. And I'll keep referring back to that book, by the way. All right, so this is kind of, you know, the startup screen, if you will. Um, you know, this is going to be where we draw our stuff. And uh, we have these, you know, a bunch of icons and stuff up here. I'm going to talk about the interface here as I go through. Um, let's start with this thing called the ribbon. So um, you can do this along with me if you want, or you can pause the video and do it when I show you. Um, this is called the ribbon, and the ribbon holds, you know, kind of all of our commands. You know, if I want to make a wall or a door or a window, or I want to go in and get some furniture, I want to do a structural column, a roof, ceiling, you get the idea. Stuff. Um, and then there are um, other um, tabs that hold other things. So this is structural things like beams and columns and things like that. And so it goes. Different um, different uh, tabs taking us to different things. Um, we'll use some of these tabs a lot. Like we'll use um, annotate a lot and we'll use architecture a lot. And then there's some that we probably won't use at all. Like you know, probably not going to use systems so much in this class or precast. Um, You'll notice on mine, I have Loom Tools and Enscape. These are third-party programs that run within Revit. And we will be using uh, Enscape in here to do our photorealistic rendering. And you won't see Loom Tools uh, so much in this period. If Loom Tools does try to open and it asks you if you want to open it, just say, nah, just don't load. OK. Um, let's see, let's roll on here. So what we have over here is the project browser. Um, it's going to kind of take us to different views of the project. Like I want to see it from a particular direction. Let me just do a for example. I don't want you to do this, just watch. Um, if I made some walls, let's just say, just watch this part of it. I'm just going to go ahead and make this to level two. And I'm just going to make a little, little mini house here. So there's a little mini house. Just again, please don't do this with me. I'm just using this as an example to um, let's say yes to that to explain the browser. Make a foot. Let's go ahead and put a little roof on here. Okay. So what I have is I have a little house. Um, so what the project browser does is it takes you to different views of the house. So for example, if I want to go to floor plan, which is looking straight down on it, that would be like a top view. If I wanted to look at it from the front, then that would be what's called an elevation view. So what the project browser does is that allows you to basically bounce between different views. If I want to look at it from the east view, 
So that would be from like a right side view. So we're looking at the building from different directions. So that's what this thing is all about. It's about just, you know, looking at the building from different directions. This thing will populate as you add more stuff to it. Um, the other thing we have here is the properties bar. So what the properties bar is, it, kind of what it tells you, it tells you kind of about the thing you picked. So for example, on this, it's a 912 slope. If I wanted it to be, let's say, a 312 slope, then I change its properties. If I want to change the type of the roof, I can change the type of the roof. And so then it becomes, let me just do this in shaded. You know, it comes, becomes a different type of roof than maybe this generic 12. So you can see how it changed in thickness and stuff like that. So um, it'll give us information about it as well. For example, the area of this roof is what? 2,178 square feet, you know, which means we'd know how much, you know, roofing material we had to put on if we needed to know that. So properties, um, project browser, and the ribbon. I am going to close these. You can see the little tabs that open up here. So I'm going to go back. Level 1 is kind of where you started right here. I'm going to go ahead and just delete everything. Let me just do it this way. I'm going to go to the 3D view. And I'm just going to delete this house because we're not going to do it quite yet. Okay. So back we go to level 1. And we have this kind of empty screen. And of course, this is the screen. Uh, these little guys are called elevation marks. Picture them as like a cameraman looking at your model from different directions. So this one's looking at it from the east view, this one's looking from the north view, and so on. So we want to put our building in between those cameramen so that we can look at it, you know, from those directions kind of anytime we want. Now, um, on this, I'm, I'm moving my, so I'm on page, go with me on the book here, I'm on page six, just showing you stuff. Okay, I showed you the ribbon. So on this ribbon right here, uh, it has four different displays. This little button right here, it gets hit all the time. If you hit it by accident, it's going to change the way your ribbon looks. Now you'll still see that it has all those same elements, just kind of repackaged. So it has less space up at the top. If you hit it again, then it even changes even more. And then you hit it again, then there's almost nothing there. It's just the, the pull downs and hit it one more time. You're kind of back to where you were. So it's a one, two, three, and four. So I guarantee you're going to hit this by accident and you're going to see something looks like that. And you go, oh my God, what happened to my, my uh, ribbon? It looks all funky. How do I fix it? And the answer is you go, to here. I would like you to play with that once I'm done here, so make it so you notice the difference. Okay. The other thing that happens is uh, these property bar and, and project browsers, they get closed by accident too. And basically if they're closed, you can't really do anything in the software. So I'm going to close both of those. So like this is pretty much you can't work in Revit. You can't because you need to be able to get around in the model and see things and without those there, you're stuck. So uh, the way to get them back is you're going to go to view and you're going to come all the way over here to the last one, user interface. So you see this project browser and properties, how they're unchecked. So like if I want the project browser back, I hit it and there it's back. If I want to get the properties bar and it's back. Um, these can be torn off so you can take these guys and you can dock them. You can even put them on another screen if you want. Um, if you double click on them, it'll move them back in the uh, in the spot where they are. Just double click on the top there, double click. Um, you can also just literally bring them back in and you can put them in different layouts like you'd lay it out. Come on now. You can lay it out kind of side to side like that where your drawing space is over here. On a little laptop, that's probably not very good here, but um, get the basic idea. You can lock those in. You can see how terrible that looks right there. See how it's taking up the entire bottom there. So, and I'd like you to play with that a little bit too. Just, you can move these and stretch them and stuff and you can put these and dock them. Come on, docking. Like, sorry, with my classroom, with my software here, it's a little glitchy there. There we go. And put them back in. I usually just kind of stretch these to maybe right around there somewhere so you have more drawing space and a little bit less space there. But if you need to stretch them out because you need to see something, you do that. So I would like you to uh, pull them apart, you know, 
and drag it around, move it around. If you want the properties bar on the bottom, you can put it on the bottom. You can put it on the top. It's completely whatever you want to do. So however you want to dock it. Um, it makes no difference whether the browser's on the top and the properties bar is on the bottom. But you can flip-flop them all you want. You can move that away and then bring it on the bottom. Whoops. And you can bring it on the bottom and you can sequence the way you want. Whoops. I didn't do that very well, did I? Let's try that again. You just have to dock it so it's not covering the other one. There we go. Okay. Now, if you zoom, can you see these guys way over here? If you zoom out funky and you can't see the uh, the stuff on your screen, the letters Z A. If you type no enter, just Z A Z A, and it'll zoom all and it'll put everything right in the screen. So I'm panning, see I'm panning up, see the, how the, the elevation markers are going away? Way out there, so ZA and it brings them back. Zoom all. Okay. Those are all stuff I want you to try, just goof around with it as I'm doing it. Okay, I just finished page seven, I just did page eight, rolling right along, just did page nine, so not a ton there. Um, we have these view display bar. This thing on the bottom is called the view display bar. We'll be going into this a little bit more once we get the drawing going, but this shows things like the scale of the drawing. We can turn the shading and stuff on and off. There'll be things like that we, we, we deal with this, getting the view display bar. All right. Um, all right. My notes say on the bottom of page 10 to show split screens on monitors, but that doesn't work so well with these uh, Camtasia videos. So you can use dual monitors really effectively um, using Revit. You know, you want to put the Word document on one screen and then have your Revit on the other screen. It makes it really handy in my class, especially. If you have a little laptop, tell your parents you need a monitor to plug into it. Monitors are pretty cheap. You can get a really nice monitor for like 80 bucks. Okay, um, or if you really have, like nice monitors, you can spend you can spend a thousand dollars on a monitor, but don't do that. Okay, all right. So let's make ourselves a building. I'm on page eleven. Okay, so I'm just going to roll right on through this. I'm going to go kind of fast, but the way I work this uh, this notes sheet here is this is pretty much a a copy of what I'm saying. So this is your, I don't want you to take notes when I'm talking. Same thing in class. I like, this is what this book is for, is so you don't have to take notes. You can always go back and, oh, what did he say again? Oh, yeah, that's right. I got to go here and do that. It's like a transcript of what I'm saying. All right, so let's make ourselves a building. Um, I'm going to go to the Architecture tab, and we're going to go to Wall, and we're going to go to Architectural Wall. Uh, I'm going to set this up to level two, and I'll explain when I what that is once we get there. But unconnect is not going to work for us. We want to do level two. Um, and you know, you have generic eights right here. I think in the properties, let's go ahead and make that a generic five. Now, there's no such thing as a generic five wall. Um, it's going to be what's called a placeholder. It's just a wall for now, and then we'll change it to a smarter one later on. Okay. Now. Um, the building I want you to make is on page 12, and I don't want you to make it perfectly, on purpose. So here comes my, my mouse, you see my mouse moving around here. I'd like you to make it in the ballpark of the size, but not exactly, like in the picture there on page 12 it says 50 feet. I'm going to make mine 55-ish, uh, come over this way, it says 25, I'm going to go, I don't know, 32. 28 is fine. Just in the ballpark. I don't want you to make it perfect. I want you to absolutely not make it perfect. That would be doing the math 20 feet. I'm going to do that, not 20 feet. This one would be if I do the math on 60 feet minus 25 feet, that's 35. I'm going to go whatever. And then I'm just going to pull this up. See how kind of, see that little dashy line right there, right there, that dashy line going horizontal? That's what I want right there. And then come across. Now once you hit this last spot, it's going to finish up the walls and just hit escape a couple times. The escape key is on the top left corner of your key, of your keyboard. All right, and you have yourself a building. If I went to the 3D view, that little house up there, you'll see it's a house. If yours is showing black and white like this, you can just come down here and do consistent colors. And what it'll do is it'll kind of give you like a shaded mode of the, of the building. All right, um, 
let's go back to level one, then we'll start messing around with the 3D view. I'm going to go back to level one up here. So I have I have two different views open right now. Okay. So the way the software works is um, it's called parametrics. And the idea is, is um, dimensions, these numbers that you'll see, these numbers, these numbers kind of dictate the size of the walls. So in this case, what do I want here? It's saying, it's saying that this wall is 25 feet long, but you'll notice when I pick on this wall, the dimension goes the other way. I want this to be 25 feet long. So I'm going to pick the wall that I want to move, and it's this one. And I'm going to pick the number. I'm going to type 25. That's all you need to do. You don't have to put feet or inches or anything, and just hit enter. And what will happen is that wall now moves because that's the one I picked. Now, I want to make this wall 60 feet from this one, but you'll notice that the number is not going all the way to the end here. It's stopping at this wall, which is not really what I want. So I'd like you to grab the little blue dot there called a the witness line. You're going to left click on it, hold your left mouse button down, and then see how kind of dashy is there, and just let go. Now you'll notice that you have a number going all the way across. I'm going to pick that 64 and make it a 60 and hit enter and you'll notice that the wall that I picked is the one that moves. Let's go the other way. Let's try to get this wall right here. That would be a, doing the math there, that'd be a 20 feet. Well that's a 16 so that's not right. So I'm going to make that a 20. Notice the wall that I picked is the one that moves. Now I'd like this wall to move and I would like it to be 60 feet, or sorry 50 feet from here. So I'm going to grab that little blue dot, left click and hold, and then just kind of release it on top of that wall. And you'll see, oh, that's like six, minus 60 feet. Again, the wall that I picked is the one that's going to move. 50, enter. So that is what your building should look like. It should be 25 and 35, and it should be 20 and 30, like that. All right, and again, um, if by the way, if you do this by accident, if you pick one of these little, this little dimension thing here, this little arrow thing, it just makes the dimension permanent. We'll talk about permanent dimensions later. For now, I don't need those. You can just hit them and hit the delete key if you accidentally hit that, and that's no problem. All right, so that's our building. That's what it should look like. If you went to the 3D view, you can also get the 3D view for to here, by the way, either way. Um, you can use the, um, see this little box up here? This is called the view cube. You can use the view cube to spin it around. Your middle mouse button um, zooms in and out. If you hold your middle mouse button down, you can pan left and right. There's no, you don't have to hold shift, shift keys down or anything like that. Um, you also have this thing called the navigation bar. The navigation bar, click, if you click on orbit, it'll let you hold, if you hold your left mouse button down, it'll let you kind of more exactly move this thing around a little bit. So you can zip it around like so. Hit escape a couple times, and I'll get you out. So again, the view cube, the view cube, and you can look at this thing in all kinds of weird spots like that, spin it around. You can even look at it like from a, like a right side, and it'll kind of put it straight on. So that's the level thing that I was doing there, level one to level two. Um, for now, you can just put the saying in, I don't know, let's see, let's do maybe southeast. See how we have a southeast there. So if you pick on the southeast corner, that'll be where I am. Okay, um, let's go to the, in the browser, the project browser, I'm just going to call it the browser, the project browser. I'm just going to go to the south view. So you'll notice here we have these what are called level lines. So the level lines kind of control the height of the building. If I wanted this building to be higher, I could go to the 10, click on it, and let's say I want this to be 30. And you'll notice that the level line went up and then so did the walls. So now if I look at my 3D view, um, I've got a taller building. If I go back to the uh, south view, I could say, you know, I want this to be really, really tall. Let's say it's 100. Please don't do anything crazy here because it's going to go way off the screen with BMS. And you can see the building gets taller and the building gets taller. So those levels control a lot actually, more, more than just the walls, those are, that, that stuff will be coming. Things like floors and stuff like that come along too, roofs and things like that. All right, I'd like you to go back to the south view after you've played with that a little bit. Let's go back to 10 feet here. 
10. All you have to do is type 10 and hit enter. And that'll go zooming back down again to like there. Um, some of you may have accidentally hit this little squiggle right here, and that's okay. Just drag this back up. Just left click and hold. It's just a, it's just a way sometimes these guys get close together to, to get them away from each other, but that should be fine. You can also move this just a little closer. See a little round dot there? You can left click and hold and just move it a little bit closer to the building so you can see that a little bit better. Same thing over here. Just left click and hold, drag, something like that. All right. Now this is from a front view here, so if I go to the level, you're not going to be able to see those from this view. That would be basically looking at it from this direction, that, that south elevation. Okay, one really, really important thing. I'm going to go to the south elevation. Never, never, ever, 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 never, ever delete levels. If I took that level, for example, please don't do this, but just watch. And if I hit the delete key, first off it's going to say, wow, you sure you want to do that? And I just, you just ignore it. Oh, yeah, I want to delete the level. I don't want to see it. And what happens now is my building is toast because everything on that level assigned to that level got deleted. So that's an evil don't ever do thing. <laughs> okay, unless you're really sure you need to delete it. I'm going to use the undo command, the greatest thing in the history of mankind for uh, computers. And we're back. And you see the level came back and so did the stuff that was on it. So this, this little undo command is going to be your friend. All right, so I think we're in pretty good shape here. Um, let's see. Um, so let's go back to level one. Whoops, I closed level one here. So I'm going to go ahead and open it back up again because it was deleted, remember? There we go. All right, I am on page 15 at the top. So um, one of the things I told you, these were placeholder walls. So, you know, we have a whole wall and we want to change it. We don't want it to be that kind of wall anymore. We want to be a different type of wall. So we're going to pick it and we're going to change it to a different wall. Let's change it to the second one on the list, this exterior brick on CMU. Concrete masonry units are like cinder blocks um, in our classroom. Almost our whole school is made out of CMU. Okay, I'm going to hit that, and you'll notice that the, uh, that the wall got thicker. I'm going to come over here and just change this to medium. You'll see this stuff a little bit better there. Um, if yours is kind of dark, if it looks like this, you can just hit this little thin lines button right here. And I'll, I'd kind of like it like this right now. Okay, so we've changed the type of wall. You just pick on it and you can swap it out. Really, really easy. So I just changed this front one right here to a brick on CMU. Again, it's the second one down on the list. So pretty easy. All right. Um, I showed you more detail there. Um, now let's look at this thing in 3D. Now it said brick on CMU. So brick is on the outside and CMU is on the inside. But if you look at the wall, you'll notice that there's no brick. Um, again, if you don't have this shaded, you can turn this on to consistent colors. If yours looks like that, you want it to look like that. Okay, however, watch this. If you rotate it around, you'll say, oh, there's the brick. So the brick's on the inside. See, Revit doesn't know the difference between inside and outside, so it just didn't know. So how do you, obviously we need the brick on the outside because that's where it's supposed to be. So how do you change it? Well, let me show you. If you go back to level one, see that little blue arrow right there? All walls have them, see it there? Well, that's supposed to be outside. So that, so we need to click on it, and what that does, see how it flipped the wall? So now if I look at my 3D view, let me spin it back around again, you'll notice now that the brick's on the outside, the way it's supposed to be. So what I need you to do is I need you to make sure all of the walls are oriented correctly. I need it to be so the arrow is on the outside. If yours is already on the outside, just leave it there, that's fine. Mine, they're all wrong. You can see how they're all wrong there, right? See, boom. That's okay, so you can change them whatever you want, but that's that's what I need it to be. So the arrows are all on the outside. When we change these walls later on, we need those to be on the correct direction. Okay, so you should have something that looks like on page 16. I already showed the view cube and the steering wheel. Um, I'm on page 17. And um, I've shown you the, the uh, display bar on the bottom, so you can change the displays to different things. So if I go to the 3D view, for example, um, you know, I could change this to realistic. And what it's going to do, 
It's, it's gonna you know give it kind of a, almost a cartoonish thing, but that's kind of what the bricks sort of will look like when they're when they're done. Um, I wouldn't keep it unrealistic. Um, sometimes we just want to check and make sure that we're kind of going with the right material. Um, if you're on um, shaded, shaded has shadow. You can see how there's like a shadow here, so the sun's coming in, and then this isn't. So this is getting sh this is not getting sun, but this is, and this is, but this is not. If you go to consistent colors there's no shadow so it just takes away the shadow you know um, parameter I guess um, I like it unshaded so I like to see the shading but um, if for some reason it's a problem you can always change it to consistent colors okay and of course you can always go back to black and white hit the line and then we also have this um, wireframe so wireframe is so you can kind of kind of see through so you can say you can say I can see through the whole thing there we need that every once in a while, so that's that's a valuable one sometimes. But right now, keep it unshaded. All right. Um, I think we're doing pretty good there. I'm on page 18. I've already talked about the arrows. So um, you're going to flip them so they're all going the right direction. All right, and I think we're in a good place. Let's go ahead and do a save. I would like you to save this. Um, if you're at home, you're going to have to just find a place to save it where you can bring it in later, maybe a USB drive or something like that. Um, we have a My Documents we save in class. So if you're doing this at home and you have access to your My Documents, you can save it there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. My My Documents don't look like yours. So do a file, save as a project and we're going to save it in your my documents um, sorry let me think about what I want to do here I'm going to save this as I'm trying to think of where we're going to save it I'm going to change my location of where I'm saving it. Okay, I don't want you to do this. I want you to save it in your my documents. Okay, if you can, I'm going to save this in a different place. Um, I'm going to call this. I'd like you to put your uh, initials in front, and then call Revit Demo One. I think on the notes you want to change that. Let's go Revit. Two oh two two, demo one, like that. You don't have to put RVT at the end or anything, and then just hit save. So what that's going to do is it's going to save um, a copy of the file. Okay, but save it into your My Documents, or again, if you're bringing it, um, if you're doing this at home and you don't you don't have access to your My Documents, you know, save it on a USB drive or something so you can bring it to school. Okay, so that is it. That is Revit Demo 1. Um, I'll be doing these videos for 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way through for the people who have a issue with being in class, you know, for whatever reason. All right, have a great day, folks, and look forward to maybe seeing some of you on Revit Demo 2.